The Pokemon League of any region is a place of formidable strength. The Indigo Plateau, however, has represented a place of particular challenge for those who wish to become and remain a member, especially given that it has the unique position of being the league for two regions, both Kanto and Johto. Couple this with the rise of three child prodigies within a two-year period and you have massive shifts within a league that can only have five members at any given time. Within the three years from the events of Pokemon Red and Blue to Gold and Silver, the Indigo Plateau had ten different members. The current champion, Lance, has represented the utmost of consistency, bouncing between being the top Elite Four member and the champion. But there's only one other member who has kept a position throughout this entire tumultuous three-year period and beyond. Bruno. The fighting type Elite Four member of the Indigo Plateau, and the second Elite Four member that we ever face in the main series games. When discussing Bruno, it's probably best that we just start out with our first impression. Namely, that this is a big dude. Bruno's stature is due in part to his philosophy as a Pokemon trainer. Bruno believes that just like a trainer trains their Pokemon, they should also train themselves. And he goes as far as to send a message to the player offering to actually show them how to do this. From our actual face-to-face -face encounters with Bruno in the games, we don't actually learn a whole lot about him, aside from his intense training, his belief in the unlimited potential of both people and Pokemon, and his heavy focus on power in battle. However, we do get to learn some really interesting things about him from the Fame Checker item and through people on the Sevi Islands in Fire Red and Leaf Green. The first comes from a journal found in Saffron City which states that Bruno apparently joined the Elite Four out of his burning ambition to battle the best trainers. The fact that this journal is found in Saffron and describes Bruno's Elite Four ambitions might indicate that he had affiliations with the former fighting type gym that used to be in Saffron, or perhaps even was its leader who then moved on to bigger things once it got shut down, but that's uncomfortable. Confirmed. The second is kind of a funny one. Bruno definitely doesn't seem like the kind of guy to visit a spa, but one of the people at the Ember Spa on one island tells us that he visits the spa every now and then. But it's merely to rehab his and his Pokemon's injuries, apparently. A woman on Two Island tells us that Bruno is quite fond of Rage candy bars, which is perhaps a guilty pleasure of his. Finally, a man on Seven Island in the Sevalt Canyon tells us that Bruno actually used to train with the Hoenn region's fighting-type gym leader, Brawly. With his massive emphasis on training and his status as an Elite Four member, we know that Bruno is a powerful trainer. But is he perhaps stronger than we even realize? Let's look at all of his appearances in the main series games to construct his best possible team. It's time to find out Bruno's true power. The first time we encounter Bruno is in the first Pokemon games ever, Red and Blue. The massive boulders and Bruno's imposing figure definitely do justice for how rugged and powerful Bruno is in this battle. Bruno starts off with a level 53 Onyx, followed by a level 55 Hitmonchan, a level 55 Hitmonlee, a second Onyx at level 56, and a level 58 Machamp. Bruno leading off with a rock type is definitely kind of interesting and it's actually a pretty decent strategy to throw off opponents who might bring in a flying type to counter his fighting type Pokemon. Bruno can also be encountered in Gen 1's third version game, Pokemon Yellow, where he has the same five Pokemon all at the same levels, however some of his party's movesets have actually improved quite substantially. His Onix for instance now has Rock Slide instead of Rock Throw, and his first Onix also has the ground type stab move, Dig, and his second one has Earthquake. His Hitmonchan also has access to Fire Punch and his Hitmonlee now has Double Kick, with both also having Double Team. Finally, his Machamp also has Karate Chop and Strength. The Red and Blue remakes, Fire Red and Leaf Green, provide an awesome opportunity to start seeing what Bruno is capable of since we can actually battle him on two separate occasions, unlike in Gen 1. The first encounter is again on our way through the Elite Four, in which Bruno has the same five Pokémon, but with all of them being two levels lower. However, their movesets are even better than in Yellow with moves like Iron Tail, Rock Tomb, Mock Punch, Brick Break, and Cross Chop being thrown into the mix, along with a Citrus Berry on Machamp along with Bulk Up to make it even more challenging to take down. However, Fire Red and Leaf Green also have a feature where you can rematch the Indigo Plateau even after becoming champion, in which all of the members have much stronger teams. In this rematch battle with Bruno, he now starts off with a fully evolved Steelix at level 65, his Hitmonchan and Hitmonlee now both at level 65 as well, a second Steelix at level 66, and his Machamp now at level 68. This team is pretty darn powerful and it's awesome to see him with Steelixes even though this is a Gen 1 remake.
The next time we encounter Bruno in the main series is in Pokemon Gold, Silver, and Crystal, where he is the only Indigo Plateau member to have kept his position in the three years that have passed, with the lone exception of Lance. In fact, Bruno has actually moved up one position, meaning he's now the third Elite Four member that we face. Despite this, since we only have the eight badges from Johto at this point, Bruno does use a scaled-down team. Although we do get to see a new Pokemon we haven't seen him with before, a brand new Hitmontop at level 42. His Hitmonlee and Hitmonchan are also at level 42, his Onyx is at level 43, and his Machamp is at level 46. Bruno is next found in the Gold and Silver remakes Hard Gold and Soul Silver. Similarly to Fire Red and Leaf Green, he can actually be battled two separate times, the first of which he has an almost identical team to the first time we face him in the originals, with that 42 to 46 level range, but just with better movesets. Our rematch with Bruno after we've collected all 16 badges across the two regions is where things begin to get real interesting. He starts off with his Hitmontop at level 62, his Hitmonlee and Hitmonchan at level 61, all three of which have close combat, mind you, a brand new Hariyama at level 62, showing us that he likely actually traveled to Hoenn to train with Brawly unless it was traded to him, a brand new Lucario at level 64 likely indicating more traveling, and finally his Machamp at level 64 with the fatal Dynamic Punch and No Guard combination. The final game we can battle Bruno in is the Pokemon Yellow remakes Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, which occur around two years after the events of Gen 1 and which show us two new additions to Bruno's collection. In our first Elite Four challenge, he's got his Onix, Hitmonchan, and Hitmonlee at level 52, a brand new Poliwrath that we haven't seen before also at level 52, and his Machamp is now at level 53. These games also give us the opportunity to rematch him though, and it's definitely one of his stronger appearances, which makes sense with the timeline. In this rematch, he's got his Onyx, Hitmonchan, and Hitmonlee all at level 62, a brand new Alolan Golem at level 62 showing us that he might have traveled to the Alola region, his Poliwrath at level 62, and finally his Machamp at level 63. It's time for the moment we've all been waiting for. Using all of his appearances in the main series Pokemon games, let's construct Bruno's best possible team. The first pick is going to go to his Lucario from his Hard Gold and Soul Silver Elite Four rematch battle, in which it's at level 64. At the time of creating this video, in the full Pokedex Gen 7 metagame, Lucario is currently in the UU tier of competitive battling. With great attack and special attack, good speed, and overall decent defenses, Lucario has the very rare potential to actually function well as a mixed attacker and has great typing too. Since Bruno's Pokemon are largely physically oriented, I think it would be a good idea to run with a special attacking set consisting of move reminder moves such as Nasty Plot to raise its special attack even further, Stab Aura Sphere, and if Bruno can get them, TR moves such as Stab Flash Cannon, Shadow Ball, Psychic, Dark Pulse, or Dragon Pulse for coverage. Lucario could also work really well physically with moves that Bruno has on it like Stab Iron Tail, or Meteor Mash via Move Reminder, Stab Close Combat, Priority Extreme Speed, etc., but I think this team definitely calls for a specially oriented set. The second pick is going to go to Bruno's signature Pokemon, his Machamp, as it was in his Fire Red and Leaf Green rematch team at level 68. Machamp is also in the RU tier and has some great bulk and insane attack. The key here is Machamp's No Guard ability, which makes it unable to miss, combined with the Stab Dynamic Punch move through Level Up, which has 100 base power and guarantees confusion. Couple this with coverage moves that Bruno has on it like Earthquake, Rock Slide, or Stone Edge, and this is a very threatening Pokemon that adds great coverage and bulk to Bruno's team. The third best team slot is going to go to his Hitmonlee, also from his Fire Red and Leaf Green rematch team, in which is at level 65. Being in the upper NU tier, Hitmonlee is largely considered to be the best of the three Hitmons and has an amazing attack and special defense and a good speed stat too. Bruno's Hitmonlee has the Reckless ability which increases the power of moves with recoil or crash damage by 20% and pairs perfectly with Stab High Jump Kick which already has an insane 130 base power. With other moves like Rock Slide, Poison Jab, Blaze Kick, and Earthquake for coverage and the potential for priority fake out via Move Reminder, Hitmonlee provides a good amount of speed, coverage, and insane power to this team. The fourth spot is going to go to Bruno's Hitmontop from his Heart Gold and Soul Silver rematch team in which it's at level 62. Hitmontop is currently in the NU tier and has pretty good attack and defenses along with a passable speed stat. Hitmontop has Technician which raises the power of its priority quick attack and also has moves to work with like Stab Close Combat, Earthquake, Sucker Punch, and perhaps most importantly Rapid Spin to get rid of hazards on the field, which also gets the Technician damage bonus. Hitmontop provides a crucial spinner and momentum switching role on this team. 
The second last spot is going to go to Bruno Steelix, also from his Fire Red and Leaf Green rematch team, in which is at level 66, making it his second highest level Pokemon. Steelix is currently in the NU tier and has some very strange stats, including an insane defense. Its main function on the team might be to set up Stealth Rock as a lead since it does have the sturdy ability and will inevitably get to set them up. And after that, it's a good way to counter incoming flying attacks, which are otherwise quite a big threat to this team. It also has access to Stab Iron Tail or Heavy Slam via TR, Stab Earthquake for some solid damage, and many other options via level up including the elemental fang moves, stone edge, and crunch for coverage. And the final pick for Bruno's best team is definitely an interesting one, is Alolan Golem from his Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee rematch team in which it's at level 62. Alolan Golem is currently untiered, but its usage stats are actually quite good relative to many other untiered Pokemon. Alolan Golem's stats and typings are really interesting and allow it to fulfill many roles, which would depend on its ability, which we don't know since Let's Go didn't have abilities. If it's galvanized, that changes normal type moves to stab electric type moves, and we definitely want to run some sort of bulky stab electric type explosion set. If it's magnet pull, we could potentially run a choice scarf max speed steel trapping set with fire punch, earthquake, stone edge, and wild charge. Alolan Golem is basically here to make sure that bulky waters don't wall the heck out of this team and also helps to deal really well with flying types both offensively and defensively which are a huge problem for Bruno. Although this is definitely Bruno's best team, he does have some other Pokemon as options to be switched in for certain circumstances. First is his level 62 Poliwrath, which would definitely provide some nice coverage, but is outclassed by Machamp in its role as a bulky physical attacker and adds yet another flying and psychic weakness to the team. Next is his second Steelix, which is at level 65, and despite being strong, is not really needed given that he already has one, and that would of course violate Species Clause anyway. Finally, his level 62 Hariyama is a usable Pokemon, but once again it's outclassed in that bulky attacker role. Well, there we go everyone, we have discovered Bruno's true power and unveiled his strongest possible team in the main series games. If you enjoyed this video and are looking forward to more from this series, please be sure to leave a like, share it on social media, and subscribe with notifications on by hitting that bell icon if you haven't already. All forms of support help a ton and are super appreciated. Don't forget to comment down below with what trainer you wish to see featured next. The comment with the most likes will pick the trainer for the next week's episode and will be featured on screen. Before we go, I'd like to give a quick shout out to my patrons, thank you guys so much for your support. If you enjoy my content and would like to support the channel and get some cool perks, the link to my Patreon page will be in the description below. This has been Sil Spectre, and I'll see you guys next time for some more... True Power.